The two-handed backhand has now become a real weapon in the modern game. We see players like Djokovic, Alcaraz and Sinner destroying the ball on that backhand side, ripping winners down the line, ripping winners cross court and being able to hit winners on the full stretch on those wider balls as we see so often with Novak Djokovic. And it's important that we have both a strong forehand and a strong backhand if we want to be a complete tennis player in the modern game. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to hit the perfect two-handed backhand in three simple steps. Hey everyone, Coach Simon here with Top Tennis Training, so let's get stuck in. Now before we get to step one, it's all about the grip. Now on the bottom hand, the ideal grip for me has always been that continental grip. This allows me to actually hit through the ball and still produce some degree of topspin. And with the top hand, I use an eastern forehand grip. And this is the most standard grip on the ATP Tour. The eastern forehand grip on the top hand, which allows us to hit through that ball, and the continental grip on the bottom hand. So step one is all about that preparation. When we're waiting in that ready position, most likely you're going to be holding the racket like this either with the left hand on the throat of the racket or holding the top of the grip like this. Now, as soon as we recognize it's coming to our backhand side, that initial step will be to coil the upper body and at the same time, get into our backhand grip. This means that if I'm holding the throat of the racket, my left hand has to now slide down until I reach the actual grip. And it all happens in just a few milliseconds. It's a very quick action and you have to work on this. It has to be from this position to this position. The quicker we can do this, the more time we'll have on that two-handed backhand. Now at the same time that we're changing into that backhand grip, we also want to be coiling the right shoulder. So this means I'm pointing that right shoulder towards the oncoming ball. I'm getting my shoulders side on and I'm storing energy in the trunk muscles. Once I separate my right shoulder from my right hip, this is where I really store that explosive energy in those core muscles responsible for the rotation of the upper body. So I'm in my ready position, waiting for the forehand. I see the balls coming to the backhand, that split step, and that initial coil with the upper body. As you can see, my racket head still remains higher in the grip when I start the swing. This will give me more space to accelerate and more leverage or force over that shot. Now, at the same time that I'm coiling the upper body and getting into my backhand grip, I want to start moving towards that ball. And this means that my left foot basically tucks under my body. So it's a split step and tuck. And this pivot with my left foot allows me to then run to the ball with normal running steps. What we want to avoid doing is trying to move to the ball with side steps. That takes too long, it's too tiring, and you'll end up having no power on the shot. So it's this pivot and move to the ball. The quicker we can do this in one motion, the more time we'll have on that shot. The next step is now reaching the ideal power position. This means the furthest point back in the backswing. So we have the backswing, which is me preparing to go forward. And then I reach the furthest point back. I may have a slight pause in this position. And then I have the forward swing. So what we should be looking to do in that power position is number one, having the rack ahead higher than the grip level. If my rack ahead is level with the grip, the space to accelerate to the point of contact is limited. But by having the racket head higher, I now have the space and I also have the leverage or that force in the arm and the racket head. So I'm in this position here. As you can see, my strings are facing the left side of the court and I have the right shoulder pointing towards that ball and my chin is resting above the right shoulder. Now in this position, if you have the option of stepping forward using either a neutral or semi-closed stance, that's when you can have your body weight on the back leg. So in this position, the body weight is now 70 or 80% on my left leg, and I'm ready to then transfer the weight 
whilst I start that swing towards the point of contact. Now, even if I'm hitting an open stance backhand, the body weight will be on that outside leg, ready to then drive into that shot. Now, things to avoid in that power position is number one, having your strings close to the ground too much, because then you'll produce too much topspin and the shot will become too pushy. So we want to have the strings neutral or around that neutral zone. Number two, we don't want to be tucked in with the elbows. We want to create some space so have the arms away from the body, which will give you more room to build that racket head speed. And number three, we want to avoid being front on in this power position. We want to have that coil with the upper body showing my shoulder towards that oncoming bowl. And step number three is now the contact point and the finish. Now in general, it doesn't matter if you use extended arms or bent elbows, we want to be making contact in front of our body. This is because it allows both eyes to see that point of contact. Now, of course, the contact point happens so quickly, it's almost impossible to see the ball hitting the strings, but what we can see is the ball rising up to the strings and then coming off. So this is only possible with both eyes if we make contact in front. If I make contact on side, it's typically the eye closer to the racket that sees that point of contact. And the second reason is that when I make contact in front, the entire body is supporting the racket head. If I make contact on side, now it's the wrists and the elbows which take the load of that shot. Over time, if I constantly make contact late, I can end up injured in my wrist or my elbow. So by making contact in front, I'm more steady, I'm more balanced, and I can actually track that ball properly. Now, some players will extend their arm so they really make contact far in front of the body. This is players like Andre Agassi. He really goes out to meet that ball way in front of his body. And he has the left hand then extending towards his target. Now with Djokovic, he goes from this straight elbow position to a bent elbow with the right hand and the left arm extends through the point of contact. So play around with it and see which kind of extension or bent elbow works better for you. Now after the point of contact, we'll want to make sure that the rack ahead goes from this position to an upward position if we're going for topspin. So the left hand really takes over and initiates that windshield wiper motion just like we do on our normal forehand. So it becomes almost like a left-handed forehand shot from that contact point. The left arm takes over, windshield wiper happens, and then I finish over my right shoulder as we see here. Now, if I'm hitting a flatter shot, I can extend through that point of contact for longer, keeping my strings on the ball for as long as I can before I then finish the swing. But I always want to make sure that I'm finishing my swing over that shoulder so that I'm able to actually slow down that racket head speed in the most natural way possible. Now, if you're going for a topspin shot, try to have the racket drop prior to contact and focus on brushing up the ball as we make contact. And if we're going for a flatter shot, you can stay on the ball level and extend through that point of contact and then finish. Now, in terms of the legs, if we're using a neutral stance, you'll want to have your body weight on the back leg in that power position. You step forward with your right leg and as you make contact, that's when you transfer the weight. So back leg to front leg. When I make contact, I'm now transferring the body weight and finally, I'll uncoil using the left hip to rotate. So it becomes like this, back leg, front leg, uncoil, and then I can recover. If I'm using an open stance, I want to make sure I'm using the hips to load 
So loading the hips, loading the legs, and then unload as I hit the shot. So it's that coil with the hips, which will give me power on that open stand shot. Once again, coil, uncoil. Now, if you want more help with your two-hander back and we have a free guide that you can download right away, I'll leave the link beneath this video. So there you have it, how to hit the perfect two-handed backhand in three simple steps. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. I hope you'll learn something from this video and I hope you'll now transform that shot into a real weapon. Now, if you have enjoyed the video, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, of course, and turn on that notification bell. If there are any lessons you'd like to see from us in the near future, leave a comment down below and we'll film the top suggestions. Signing off, Coach Simon from TTT. All the best and see you soon, guys. Take care.